cash, I got problems on problems on problems on problems on problems on problems I solve them. I run through the money, the pressure be calling. Left on my blessings, I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back. Tell me I'm garbage. I'm going through something. That's why I ain't calling. Phone and progress. <laughs> Welcome, you guys, to the long-anticipated, never-procrastinated, epic Snap-on Toolbox Tour. So today, we're going to be showcasing to you the centerpiece to our facility, or our, our main shop here, really. Um, it's so much of a centerpiece, we have it spotlighted, as you can see up here. <laughs> uh, when you walk in the front door of the shop, this is nearly... Uh, the top thing that everybody spots out and points out is this toolbox because it's the back end of the shop and it's a freaking monster. We have the Snap-on Epic Base. We have the uh, upper, I'm going to call it an upper locker. Um, we have two side lockers and we have two upper storage lockers. Um, this is called a hutch. This is not called a locker. So anyways, uh, we have had this toolbox for, I would say, 10 years about. And uh, we did order it, uh, custom built to our specification from the Snap-on dealer at the time. And it was a pretty special box to us because uh, in me coming here, I'm a third generation in this uh, collision repair industry and second generation on location here. And it has evolved into a time where we have a fourth generation joining us in my nephew. And uh, he has grown and learned out of this toolbox as well. So we have tools from my grandfather, who I never got the pleasure to meet, to my father, who I've worked hand in hand with for 10 years, a collection of my own tools over the last 10 to 12 years that I've been working here, and um, tools that my nephew has got to use in learning his trade here. And he's working on building his own tool set. So very special to us. I'm going to give you a quick tour and run through of what a, uh, let's, let's call it a shop foreman or shop operator, uh, toolbox for a collision repair industry would look like. Um, pretty much everything in this box is everything I need to do a repair, collision repair on a car from start to finish. So let's go. Starting this side locker here. Uh, disclaimer, the toolbox is freshly detailed and freshly organized. So uh, it's always uh, pretty nice, but right now it's extra nice. That's why it's a good time to do this video. This door here, I have cleaning supplies and uh, some type of spray paint. So, general cleaner, alcohol, wax and grease remover, X primer, under seal, black spray paint, and various different e coat colors that we use in the collision repair. Uh, top slide out here, I have um, some of my custom painting materials and my own personal uh, paint guns that live in this case right here. Um, so whenever I need to do a paint job, these are the guns I grab and always fresh, always clean, just the way I like them. I have some custom metal flaking materials in here for jobs that come up, uh, projects here and there. Uh, and some gold leafing stuff, but that's what's up there. This slide out here, we come to pretty often nowadays is for vinyl and uh, paint protection film installation materials. So from here down basically starts my PDR, uh, paintless dent repair tooling and whatnot. Uh, so I have a, a line board light here. I have various different drawers and different PDR tools and wedges and uh, door. This comes in handy in collision repair, but it's like a, it's called a prop and lock. And you can prop open a door, you can prop open a uh, hood or trunk with that. Uh, different pulling devices, slide hammers, what do they call this, a robo, robo lifter, I think. Uh, got a glue gun in here. See, lots of Kiko stuff. Kiko, this brand of uh, paintless dent repair stuff, is more focused towards the collision repair industry. So I have different collision type glue, different collision type pulling tabs, um, little PDR pulling tabs, attachments for our our hydraulic pulling arms for gluing on and stuff like that. And we have some tap down tools and whatnot in here. Slappers, blending hammers, stuff like that. Since we touched on that, we'll touch on this bottom door real quick. My collection of PDR rods. I'm certainly no master or professional when it comes to paintless dent repair, but in the collision repair industry, uh, constantly trying to perfect the craft and get a little better every time it's nice to have the right tools when you need them so whenever I'm going to fix a dent instead of just 
filling it with mud or filling it with Bondo. I always like to push it and uh, just perfect my craft a little more before we go towards that filler stage. Moving to this locker over here, we have a lot of other collision specific uh, stuff. I got lots of tape measures up here from metric to 25 feet, five meters. I mean, you name it, I got that stuff up there. Got some other diagnostic equipment up here, some old school screwdrivers, uh, a few different oils over here that I might need when I'm doing something. Uh, top kind of random drawer uh, where I have these random specialty tools that I don't always need, but when you need them, you need them. So that's kind of where they go. I mean, the grinders we use a lot, but for example, I have this tool here made by Steck. It's for like 1980 and 1990 Chevy truck door latch pins. When you need it, you need it. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, this is a body guide drawer right here. Of course, we have our air files um, used to rough out body work. Uh, and then you come in and you finish them with your hand blocks. I've recently picked up these big kid blocks and I freaking love them. I used to use the foam ones, but the foam ones start to bend after a while and they stay real straight. Uh, we use all hook it material here, so I got a hook it um, interface on these. Uh, a couple air tools in here by 3M that we use regularly, a couple levels. Down here, I have all of our assorted clamps. Uh, so you got your different size vice grips from this giant to tiny ones down there for when you're clamping a panel on a car uh, that you're cutting and welding and whatnot. This drawer here, I got some of our heavy duty uh, stuff, touching back on some of my grandfather's tools. Um, stuff like this, you just can't hardly buy anymore, especially with this kind of patina on it, you know? And there's something about picking up a tool like this that goes back in your family for generations when you go to work on something that makes you feel like that you have a little extra help when you're fixing that thing. You might not have the experience, but there's something about it that, that uh, gives you the, the push that you need to get that job done. So that's super cool. Anyway, here we have pry bars. Uh, you know, different assorted chisels and tips and punches and drifts and air hammer attachments and whatnot. Um, all little tools of the trade that you might need to get the job done. Drawer here is kind of a cutting drawer. Manual metal shears, hole saws, belt sanders, um, air saws, cutoff wheels, extra blades and cutoff wheels. Kind of another cutting drawer, but more like drill bits. Drill bits, extractors, um, tap and dies, all that fun stuff. And the last of these drawers is our electrical repair equipment. So soldering irons from small to big, uh, torches, shrink wrap, solder, everything you need to do in electrical repair, modification, whatever you might be doing. So that's that locker. Moving up top, this is kind of storage. We don't go up here much. Um, I have some stuff like Subaru electric vehicle, hybrid vehicle kit, has lineman gloves in there and a lot of safety equipment for working on electric vehicles. A couple tools that are in cases, some printer ink, fender covers, stuff we don't use that much, but we need it here. And up here we have some PPE. Uh, so personal protection equipment. I got my welding gear, uh, gloves, shirt, whatnot here, uh, grinding mask, respirator, and a little mobile uh, tool tote that I might use to do something at my house or something like that. Opening the hutch. This is kind of uh, command central, if you want to call it that. Got our Autel scan tool, as much as of a snap-on fan as I am. Uh, Autel in the scan tool department just freaking kills it. If you know, you know, and I'll leave it at that. Speaking of, you'll see a trend in the toolbox of overwhelming snap-on, and that's uh, personal preference, of course, yes. Love the tools, love the Made in America for the most part, but mostly we only have one vendor that comes here, and currently our vendor in uh, Johnson uh, Tool Company it is the best one that we've ever had in my time here and he does a great job with um, 
servicing our account and uh, we work really well together. He takes care of us and we take care of him. So lots of snap-on tools. Uh, moving on, a little decoration I have up here is the uh, original license plate from the McLaren build that we just finished. Uh, I have some more PPE gloves and glasses up here. If you're working on cars, you gotta have a fire extinguisher in your toolbox. You never know what might go wrong. And if you are gonna have one in your toolbox, I highly suggest a Russo Eliminator. Um, and all joking aside, my uh, some friends of ours actually invented this fire extinguisher. It is self-serviceable, so all you gotta do to service this thing is turn the handle on the bottom every so often and it's serviced. You don't have to open it and discharge them and take the powder out and sift it around and put it back in there and have a company come and do that and all that stuff. So these things are really cool for in vehicle use or for somewhere where you're gonna toss it in your toolbox for an extended period of time and you wanna make sure it works when you go to get it. These things are badass. Top drawer, gotta be my favorite drawer. Um, sockets and hand tools. So, uh, long and hard about how to organize this drawer and how to set it up. And it's not the most stock drawer that you're gonna see on the tool reviews out there, but for what I do and the collision specific stuff that we do, not heavy mechanical or tearing motors down, this definitely gets it done. So I have a sorted and quarter, three eighths and half inch as we go down that way. I have purchased these Wesling machine uh, socket holders, which are pretty badass. And I purchased the black for quarter inch, blue for three eight and uh, red for half inch, just to keep things not only aesthetic, but a uh, quick reference. You can look and see what you're looking at. So I have uh, quarter inch standard shallow and deep sockets over here, quarter inch metric shallow mid and deep here and then some uh, kind of uh, random on the universal jig here. Uh, we have like inverted torques, we have regular torques, anti-tamper torques, Allen heads over here all in the quarter inch drive. Uh, we have two different bit sets over here. We've got our quarter inch uh, hand ratchets, quarter inch so uh, sockets, and then we move right on to the 3 eighths. So we have our uh, 3 eighths extensions, 3 eighths hand ratchets, 3 eighths universal uh, jig set up here. So the same thing, inverted torques. Uh, here is where the triple squares start. We have some, uh, let's see, these are metric uh, Allen heads here. And then we have our anti-tamper and regular torques as we go down here along with some Phillips head bits. And of course, shallow and deep uh, metric 3.8 sockets. This thing right here is super badass. Um, if you don't have every socket known to man in the world of forever, getting this uh, adapter kit is like a lifesaver because you're, you might have the right socket in quarter inch but you need to use your 3.8 tool or something like that and you can mix and match all this stuff with that. So that one's awesome. Again, moving right along to half inch, we have our half inch uh, ratchet for half inch extensions and then moving to our universal jigs we have the triple squares we have the allens the torques inverted torques uh, we have a couple specific wheel sockets for different size uh, lug nuts and then of course shallow and deep and the mother of all breaker bars ah, this thing you don't use it hardly ever but when you need it you need it and it is one of my favorite tools in here because it's so big and badass Wait, there's more. Uh, as a third generation collision repair owner operator, this drawer is kind of funny because you might not see this in a lot of other people's boxes, but it's a hammer drawer. And in this drawer, I have some of those tools I was talking about again. I have grandpa's tools, grandpa's tools, grandpa's tools. This is when you're just feeling badass and you don't need a handle and you just want to, you know, Pound a den out, I don't know. <laughs> I, I need to put a handle on that. But some of these, even the heads were broken off of them and I went and bought new handles from Snap-on and uh, put them all together and got this all sorted out. So back to that generational tool concept. I have a hammer for every need in here and a dolly. Oh, okay, another hand tool drawer. We have the infamous BJ mat. You cannot go without a BJ mat. Your knees will be sore. I have a pick set and miniature screwdriver and torque set, some plastic panel poppers, some metal panel poppers, some of these little wobbly um, Allen tools. When you can't get exactly right on the Allen, you gotta get a little angle. These ones work really good. 
um, T-handle torques, little panel fitment tools, panel measuring tools, what it consists of. This drawer here, we have more hand tools, but focused on wrenches, so I got all of my assorted pliers, larger, smallers, some specific mechanical tools uh, coming in here. Um, we got our crescent wrench from the biggest to the newest to the smallest. We have um, all sorts of different assorted type of wrenches that you might need. Uh, on, not all snap on. We got some gear wrench in here. That's okay. These are pretty cool. Um, snap on wrench organizers, although only if the wrenches are going to stay in your box. If you got to grab a whole line of wrenches and take them somewhere else, these are not quite ideal. So mine for the most part stay here. I just grab the size I need out of here and go do what I need to do. This is some of our specialty electronic tools. We got a scope, uh, we got a cooling system tester, and an air purge device. I have a big dog, half inch, right? Half inch torque wrench uh, for when the duty calls. We have, in case any of the guys come in and they're feeling sick one day and you know they don't know if they might be pregnant or not, we got we got our ultrasonic gel here for doing the thing and then you just take it over and feel in the stomach and see. Just kidding. This is this tells you this is a specific tool for telling you how thick the paint is going to be on a plastic carbon fiber or FRP uh, part. And this was required of me to buy by a uh, one of the manufacturers that we have OEM certifications in. I'm sure it was about a thousand dollars and I've never used it but they made us buy it. And then we have our one for metal over here. So it's a paint thickness gauge. This one does aluminum and steel. And that does plastic. Uh, we have our calipers over here, uh, measuring uh, their digital metric and standard. And we have a 1234YF leak detector here. So when you're dealing with air conditioning uh, refrigerant, the new one, 1234YF, is explosive. And you have to do a leak test in the car when you charge it, in case anyone lights a cigarette up in the car and it happens to be leaking in the car and you don't want it to go kaboom. So that's part of the deal air tool drawer so I don't use air tools much anymore because some of the electric stuff from Snap-on is so badass so but nonetheless we'll go back to the generational thing here again I will never use this or this probably ever again in my life this is the most old-school impact <laughs> uh, if anybody knows anything about this please let me know because uh, it's so beat up, I can't quite tell. Skill Corporation, made in USA. It's some good shit, but this had to be one of my grandpa's go-tos. I don't know, like I said, I'll never use it because I got electric stuff nowadays, but I'll never get rid of it either. So, air impacts, we got some stripping tools, grinders, die grinders, drills, uh, special drills for drilling off spot welds and collision repair, a couple different types of air hammers. That's what that drawer is made of. We have the power drawer. So I don't even know if they make these on the newer Snap-on boxes, but this is pretty badass. It's got a power bank over there to plug all your chargers into. And then of course you have all your power tools. Got a half inch granddaddy uh, impact here. Three eighths, that's kind of a bit of a puss. Um, drill, small drill, screw gun, polisher dash grinder thing electric air saw, quarter inch long neck, three eighths electric ratchet, flashlight, and a cordless hot glue gun. Same thing, uh, I try and keep things consistent with colors so I know whose is whose and everything. So I got pretty much nearly all gray power tools. I think officially that's it. I mean, of course we have other toolboxes around the shop and I have equipment and welders and pullers and I got a, we got a whole giant toolbox full of just tire mounting and balancing and 
uh, wheel weights and stuff like that. I've got a toolbox behind here for diagnostics and got a toolbox over there for just aluminum tools and um, we have lots of toolboxes around the shop but that is the tour of the granddaddy uh, centerpiece to this location. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Of course, open to any input if you want any more in-depth reviews or tours of any of these drawers or if you want any part numbers, just throw it down in the comments below. Um, make sure you follow along to the channel, subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on because we're doing some badass builds as well. We've already done the McLaren builds. You could click somewhere to go check that out. <laughs> and uh, we're in the process of doing the badass GTR build. So if you subscribe, turn those notifications on, you can follow along with that. Thank you again for watching, guys. Uh, appreciate all the support. We'll catch you next time.